is in this video we are going to see the theory of virtual memory that is how the memory management is done through the virtual memory concept so uh, what we are going to see in this unit is demand paging what's meant by demand paging then copy on write page replacement algorithms which uh, uh, make the efficiency of the demand paging uh, to a greater extent then allocation of frames thrashing so all these things we are going to see in this unit so here uh, in the previous uh, memory management that is in continuous memory management the rule is the whole of the user process must be in memory so for example you, the, if the user memory needs 50k 50 50k of memory for uh, for its execution along with its code then that much space must be available in the main memory that too that space must be in a continuous memory, memory location these are the two strict rule for a continuous that is why the name itself is contiguous memory location so the whole user process must be present in the main memory and it must be in continuous memory location these are the two constraints of this continuous memory management then comes the paging next memory management is paging where one of the constraint that is the process must be kept in continuous memory location is removed but still the whole of the user process must be in memory if 50k all the 50k must be in memory but it need not be in continuous memory location wherever the space is free that uh, the user process can be split how it can be tracked how the sequential execution of the user process can be tracked that is by using the page table so here the user process is organized as pages and it need not be kept in continuous memory location here when we say user process to be split into pages we say the same size the page size we split the main memory also and now we call them as a frame so when it is in main memory we call it as frame and user process that we call it as logical address space we call it as a pages both pages and frame must be of equal size this is the uh, strict rule so that so that only the pages can be swapped into the free frame so wherever a free memory frame is available it can be kept the continuity of how it will track the continuity after which page after uh, one page which is the next page to be executed how it can be tracked that is by using the page table so in my continuous memory location memory management it must be kept in continuous memory location the user process must be in a continuous memory location that is a strict rule as well as the whole user process must be in memory in paging still the whole user process must be in memory but the user process is splitted into pages and the main memory is splitted into frames and the pages are kept wherever the memory is free free frame is available and it will be keep track on particular user process they have a separate page table and in that page table which page is present in which frame that will be kept so that it keeps track of the continuity of that particular user process next comes the virtual memory where both these two that is the whole of the user process must be in memory is removed already in paging the continuity is removed and in virtual memory this constraint is also removed so the virtual memory the disadvantage of paging can be eliminated how it is not that the whole of the user process must be present in the main memory whenever the particular page is needed at that time it can be loaded from the secondary storage into the main memory that is the logic here so in this separation of user logical memory from physical memory is that only part of the program needs to be in memory for execution say for example if a particular uh, user process is uh, it need 50k of main memory it is not that the whole 50k must be in the main memory only 10k can be loaded after out of 50k the first 10k may be loaded into the main memory so after the 10k is executed when the next 10k 
the starting line of the next 10k is to be executed at that time it will find out it is not in the main memory and it can request the secondary storage where the full program is full process is present then the next 10k can be loaded into the main memory and so on so it is not only part of the program needs to be in the memory for execution so here what is the advantage of that the user is not restricted to the main memory size so for example if the main memory size is only 4 mb but the user wants to write a program 20 mb still he can execute his program in the main memory imagine the user process needs 20 mb whereas there is only 4 mb but still he is able to run how that is what we are going to see in this it is virtual memory so logical address space can therefore be much larger than the physical space that is if the physical memory example here one more example if it is 16 mb and the logical address space of a particular process is 40 mb see the physical memory size is less than the logical address space so which is more than the physical memory still the user is able to execute this program so allow address spaces to be shared by several process it allows the address space to be shared by several process this we will be seeing shortly and it allows for more efficient process creation so more number of multiple it supports a lot number of multiple process so virtual memory can be implemented this can be implemented using uh, demand paging and demand segmentation we are going to see these two before that why we go for uh, what is the reason for partial program residence in memory partial program means only a part of the program can reside in the main memory of a user process can reside in the main memory because why we do that many error conditions error checking code all those things rarely occurs when the user makes mistake only it will occur those particular routine will be executed so uh, no need for them to occupy the space okay so programs often have code like error conditions which rarely occurs then arrays lists and tables allocated more memory than actually needed so all these things leads to uh, the concept called partial program there is no need for these things say for example if it is array has 100 elements uh, if the array is declared as 100 elements but only 10 elements are used means only those things can be loaded into the main memory the remaining space no need to waste so there are many many places where it occurs so in those cases only the one which are needed the one which has the process actual process execution that can be loaded into the main memory so what is the benefit of this what is the benefit of having allowing the partial uh, uh, keeping the program only partial in the memory the program would no longer be constrained by the amount of physical memory that is available that is one benefit that is the user can build how much number of program he, how much the program size he may want to he want to write a large program which is bigger than the main memory he is allowed to do that whereas in the previous cases it is not allowed he is restricted to the main memory size whereas now he can write a very big program a large real time program he can write which uh, occupies space more than the main memory so that thing is that because only we allow partial execution only so because he choose a program could take less physical memory more programs could be run at the same time since uh, each user program take less physical memory more programs could be run at the same time leading to effective cpu utilization and therefore yes if there are some 10 10 frames in main memory in each 10 frame 10 process can be run one page of each in process can be placed then whenever the next page is needed that can be loaded so like that at a time more than many process can run in a main memory so that is more so in that case the cpu is always utilized and then uh, the uh, it, uh, the cpu is not idle that is what our main uh, objective of the multi processing that is the cpu why we go for multi processing or multi programming the cpu time should be used properly it should not be wasted uh, whereas in single program the cpu will sit idle for most of the time except when there is a processing in most of the time it will be input output reading and writing in that case 
the cpu is not in run it will just initiate io after that the io processor will take care of that so at that time cpu should idle whereas if you have so many processes in each process there will be processing uh, information those things can be uh, executed by the cpu in a, a round robin fashion or whatever it is so that the cpu is always kept busy that is the main thing so less io would be needed to load or swap each user program into memory so each user program would run faster so this is one more advantage so less io would be needed to load or swap each user because the only thing which are necessary the necessary pages only we keep it in main memory so it it makes the program to execute faster so let us take an example for the virtual memory as i said uh, this is a user space let us consider a uh, user space or logical address space which is of type 40m 40mb and this is a physical memory which is of 16 mem physical memory or main memory which is of 16mb and this is a secondary storage it is some 16tb like that okay initially the whole of the user process will be in the secondary storage then first time it will be loaded into the main memory first this will be loaded page 0 then wherever the free frame is available in that page 0 we space and in the memory map or otherwise we can call it as a page table in that after placing page 0 in the free frame then that will be uh, updated in which frame it is kept that will be updated in the uh, memory map or you can call it as a page table likewise it can be done then uh, one day the needed can be placed so uh, say for, suppose for example one two three four five five pages are loaded but here there are so many pages say 40 pages are there here only five pages are there then after the fifth page the sixth page has to be loaded in that case it find that it is not present in the main memory and a request to secondary storage can be done that is by interrupt and we call it as a page fault when it requests what happens the io processor will be called and the data will be swapped in the page 6 will be swapped in to the main memory okay and then with it will remove a existing frame uh, say for example page 0 is no more no longer needed mean this will be removed and in the place page 6 will be swapped in and in page table the respective informations will be updated in page 6 is where is present that will be updated so this is how the virtual memory so whenever the page is needed it will be loaded from the main uh, secondary storage into the main memory and the respective table page table can be updated in order to follow that so uh, we will be seeing all these things in detail uh, this i have given only an overview but we'll be seeing in short how it is done so virtual address space virtual address space is this is the virtual address space so in virtual address space the heap is allowed to grow upward in memory as it is used in dynamic memory allocation say for example this is a user programming after the data and so on it allows to grow upward whereas the stack is say for example if there are any function call then it will be called memory stack will be used and it try to grow downward so similarly the stack is allowed to grow downward in memory through successive function calls then uh, this can be uh, virtual memory is used in shared pages there are say for example libraries or that uh, that can be shared between two programs okay that this concept also we will see in short Now we'll go to demand paging. So what is demand by the first one? What we have seen is the virtual memory can be achieved by, can be implemented by demand paging and demand segmentation. Now we are going to see this demand paging. So what is demand paging? When the page is not present in the main memory, but now it is needed, then the operating system demands that particular page to be loaded from the secondary storage into the main memory since it demands we call it a demand paging so bring a page into memory only when it is needed that is also when it is needed now the page six so for example already page five is there zero to five pages are there now the sixth page is needed now it will be demanded so bring a page into memory only when it is needed that too when it is needed so for example in asp.net any web page 
or any any temper any uh, anything which uses the user interface what you will be doing so for example you will be having different options okay so for example if you want to add if you want to add data uh, some data into that in that case only that add routine will be called if you want to do some modifications then only that time only that update button you will click and you will enter the data and the update button will be created so in that time only that update functions can be executed so uh, whenever it is needed only you will go and click that particular thing in all the other cases you won't be loading so for example web pages also when you want to click the hyperlink there are some hyperlinks when you go through in web pages if you want if it if you click that hyperlink only that particular page will be loaded or else you just pass it so that page can be brought into the main memory only when it is needed that is what so bring your page into memory only when it is needed pages are loaded when they are demanded during the program execution pages that are never accessed or thus never loaded into the physical memory if you don't click them that particular thing will never be loaded from the secondary storage into the main memory and it will never get executed so less io in this case io less io is that because when you click only those things will be loaded into the main memory so less io if you don't want you just bypass and you can go to the next thing so that is what less io needed less memory needed since it is not loaded uh, not uh, loaded memory is also uh, less memory is also needed then faster response since you are not loading the other programs execute faster and more users it supports more number of programs that is more user means more number of program multi program it supports multi programs so initially the process is in secondary storage the whole of the user process is in the secondary storage there will be nothing in the main memory that is magic when the process needs to be executed it will be swapped into the main memory when we are going to execute then only it will be swapped into the main memory so rather than swapping the entire process using lazy swapper only the needed pages are swapped in what do you mean by lazy swapper lazy swapper never swaps a page into memory unless the page will be needed that is called lazy swapper only when it is needed then only that particular page will be loaded into the main memory and that can be done by using the lazy swapper so when the lazy so the swapper that deals with pages now we don't we no more call the it as swapper we call it as a pager because it swaps from the secondary page and put it as a page so now we call it as a pager so a page is needed then a reference to to that from the secondary storage where it done then uh, if it is invalid if that is not within within the user space then it will be about that for example it is accessing other user space then it will be aborted or if it is accessing the operating system coding it will be aborted or else if it is not in memory then it will be brought to the memory so this is how it's done so for example this is the main memory this is for program a and program b now these things are all for program b and these are all for program a so for example 1 2 3 4 all these things are present here and here there are four pages uh, sorry three pages all these three pages are swapped in so here swapped in here it can be swapped out so once swapped out it will become free once swapped in this will be indicated as occupied and the uh, operating system keeps a frame list free frame list uh, or a list of frames where which frame is occupied and which frame is free so based on that the operating system will decide when a page is loaded it takes from the pool of the frame list free frame list and allocate that particular frame to the particular page so the basic concepts of a page when your process is to be swapped in the page guesses the needed pages it guesses how many pages are needed for the particular pages instead of swapping the whole process only the needed pages are brought into the memory by the page this avoids reading into memory pages that will not used anyway decreasing the swap time as well as amount of physical memory needed is also reduced so distinguish between pages in memory and the pages in disk the hardware support how to distinguish whether it is present in the memory whether say for example a particular process consists of say some 10 pages 
So how to distinguish which page is present in the main memory and which is not present? So for that, along with the page table, one more bit is there, which is called a uh, hardware support is needed, which is called as valid and invalid skip. 